Hello, good afternoon, Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning Community members. Uh, welcome to our orientation session. I'm Bridget Corteau. I'm the Director of Group Learning for the Learning Community. And on behalf of your learning community managers at the Urban Institute and the CDC Foundation, thanks for joining us for this brief introduction to what the Partnering for Vaccine Equity, or PAVE for short, learning community is all about. This is the fourth session that we've held like this. We try to do them about quarterly. So it does repeat information that we shared at sessions in October and December of last year, uh, and most recently in February of this year. Uh, before we go further, I'm gonna do our typical quick review of how the session will work. You've all been muted upon entry to the session, uh, and we ask that you please stay on mute unless you're speaking. Uh, we offer live interpretation from English to Spanish during our events. If you'd like to listen to the Spanish language channel, simply click on the globe icon in your Zoom taskbar and choose Spanish. We will try to leave time for some Q&A after our presentation, uh, but this is a short 30-minute session and there likely won't be a whole lot of time at the end, uh, so we encourage you to send us questions as you have them uh, through the Q&A tab in the Zoom taskbar that's at the bottom of the screen. And this way, we'll try to answer them as we go, either in our remarks or by typing an answer back to you in the Q&A. We encourage you to use the chat room today, too, to introduce yourself or to share comments. But just a reminder that if you do have a question for the presentation team, try to use Q&A for that so that we're sure to see and answer it. And finally, as with all of our learning events, we'll post the slides and a recording of this event on our community website and circulate them through the digest that go out from the CDC uh, through the Adult Vax Program Listserv, which all learning community members should be a part of. And if you have technical difficulties at any point during the session, we do want to hear about them. Our email is here on the screen. It's vaxequitylearning at urban.org. So please send us um, any technical issues that you're having. So I already introduced myself, uh, and for today's orientation session, I'll be sharing the stage with my group learning teammate at the Urban Institute and our website community manager, Luis Gallardo, and also our partner, Megan Fields from the CDC Foundation, who manages the Vaccine Resource Hub team. Here is a very quick look at how we're gonna spend the rest of our time together. So first, I'm gonna provide an overview of what the learning community is and what our group learning team offers to members. And then I'm gonna hand things over to Megan to review the Vaccine Resource Hub um, and all that this uh, vast repository of resources and tools has to offer you. And then Luis will wrap up the orientation with a brief review of the components of our digital, uh, our onboarding toolkit, which is all digital and a live demo of the learning community's private website and its main features. Okay, so for our overview, uh, as learning community managers, our aim is to provide you, our members, with space and opportunities to connect with each other and with subject matter experts to share promising practices and strategies that'll help you implement your program activities and achieve your own goals around increasing vaccine coverage. And over the course of our project, we're also documenting what works and building a set of resources to support longer term efforts to improve vaccine equity. And here's how we're trying to achieve these objectives. We created and now we manage a website for the learning community. It's a private site. You do need an account to access it. And Luis is going to share a lot more about the website and its features shortly. We also plan and carry out group learning events. These are virtual events that range from large webinars and panel presentations uh, to smaller group Ask the Expert sessions and training workshops. We offer about four events per month on average, and they're typically open to all organizations in the learning community and also other organizations that are working on vaccine equity. Topics include addressing misinformation, training trusted messengers, partnering with other organizations that are in your community, the science behind vaccines, and a whole lot more. We offer live interpretation into Spanish at all of our events. We also record everything and we share uh, materials from each event on our website after the fact. And that includes the Spanish and the English recordings and also any slides um, or handouts from that session. We coordinate three communities of practice um, or we call them COPs for short. Uh, these are subgroups of learning community members that serve a common priority population. And these groups are driven by their learning community members. So the members form the steering committee, uh, committee, set the agendas and decide what they're going to discuss or work on together. 
And our role as group learning team members is to help with meeting coordination and basically whatever else the COPs might need. The currently the three that we have operating um, are for African American, African diaspora serving organizations, Hispanic, Latinx serving organizations, and organizations serving Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, American Indian, and Alaska Native populations. And finally, under what we call our Promising Practice Initiative, we provided grants to and recently wrapped up work with 18 learning community members on short-term projects to implement and study a promising practice in one of three focus areas, community-based outreach, social media, or hosting vaccine events. And we're excited to share um, the results from some of those a little bit later in the summer through uh, an on-demand video uh, learning event. And I'm just gonna end my remarks with a few points about how learning community members can find out about the live group learning events that we offer. We promote events through many different pathways to try to reach as many members as possible and make sure that you're aware of what we're offering. So first we send an email to announce each live event. These are generated by our website. They usually come from our teammate, Eric Wengel. Uh, and you'll get an email when we first add an event to our calendar. And then typically we also send another one the morning of an event as a final reminder for someone who might've missed that first notice. The exception to this is if you adjust your notification settings um, in on your website account to turn off website emails, that is possible. We actually have a tutorial about it, which I think Luis is gonna mention. Um, and so if you do that, uh, just be aware that you won't be getting those email announcements about events. You can also find out about events by regularly checking on our website's event calendar, which you're going to see in a moment. Uh, and the site's homepage also usually features an upcoming event with a quick access registration button right there on the homepage. And for those who aren't regularly using the website, you can find out about events uh, in the weekly newsletters that are sent by the CDC to the adult VAX program listserv. And uh, as you'll see at the end of this session, we also plug upcoming events at the end of each live learning event and we chat the registration links. And for some events that we wanna give an extra promotional push to, for instance, if they were planned in a short time and we don't have a very big promotional window, uh, we will occasionally ask the CDC's uh, PAVE project officers and the national PAVE organizations to forward event information to the PAVE partners that they support. So this isn't typical, but it does sometimes happen that you might find out about events that way. All right, and I'm gonna hand things over to Megan to tell us about the Vaccine Resource Hub. Thank you so much, Bridget, and thank you everyone for being here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link into the chat for the Vaccine Resource Hub um, for your convenience if you wanna take a look after this presentation. As Bridget mentioned, my name is Megan Fields and I manage the Resource Hub, the Vaccine Resource Hub here at the CDC Foundation. Um, and the purpose of the Vaccine Resource Hub is to operate as the public facing sister site to the Learning Community Platform. As Bridget mentioned, the Learning Community Platform is a, a private site, it's closed. You have to have an account to log in. The Vaccine Resource Hub is open to the larger community. It's a public site. However, we do have a feature for PAVE members to use their same username and login um, to access certain features on the Vaccine Resource Hub, which we'll see in just a minute. The purpose of the Vaccine Resource Hub is to also provide resources that are scientifically evaluated, relevant, and engaging, to strengthen community engagement activities through free access to trainings, webinars, toolkits, and all the other resources we have on the site. It's also to build capacity of the CBOs by offering webinars and technical assistance resources and to fill gaps for CBOs who don't have the time, staff, or funding to create their own materials. Next slide. So as a reminder, you do not have to sign in to access the Vaccine Resource Hub. However, we do have a sign-in feature that allows you to, to upload materials that you wanna to share to the larger community on the Vaccine Resource Hub. And you would use your learning community login, the same login um, to access the Vaccine Resource Hub in that capacity as well. So you can see the yellow arrow here and you just click the sign in button. Next slide. If you do use the login, you'll, you'll see this page come up. So you'll know you're logged in because it says my Vaccine Resource Hub but you'll also see the tab to submit a resource. If you're not sure how to do that, you can read the resource submission guide. 
And then there's also a link to bring you back to the learning community if you choose to toggle between the two sites. Next slide. If you just want to use the website as a public facing website to look for resources, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. First of all, I want to point out that the website is in English, but you can toggle to turn the website into um, Spanish. There's also three active tabs that you can use. There's the find resources tab, which is going to allow you to do your search capability to look for things that are on the vaccine resource app. We also have create resources. This is a place and a page where you can go to actually use assets and create through a Google Doc your own resources using things that we've created for you to use. And then we have our stories page. This is where we house all of the amazing stories that we've written about the work that you're doing in each of your communities. Next slide. If you go to the find resources, you'll see that the search filter is all the way on the left hand side and there's lots of different tabs that you can search through to kind of identify what you're looking for. You can search by different features, um, but you'll see at the top, there's also another tab called discover. And that's really important because you may show up to the site and not really know what you're looking for. If you go under the Discover tab, there are a lot of opportunities for you to explore the content in different ways and find things that might meet the needs of your community. Next slide. And that wraps it up for me. Thank you so much. And I'll pass it back to the urban team. All right. Thank you, Megan. Um, so as we've seen, there are a lot of moving parts within PAVE. And so we created a guide to help us familiarize ourselves with the learning community. And we'll be going through that guide during the session, but feel free to download the files that seem most useful to you and follow along in the meantime. The files are available in Box, and I think Bridget, uh, when she gets the chance, will send the link in the chat. And we are currently working on a landing page in the Learning Community website where they will also be permanently housed. As a quick note, uh, some of the fact sheets and documents are finalized, but we will continue updating and translating these resources. So currently we have a few in Spanish, but are also working to expand some more translated resources as well. So in this slide, we're covering a little bit of the general learning community resources. Uh, so these are some screenshot examples of what exists in the onboarding toolkit. To the left is the about the learning community fact sheet that covers information about paid partners like organization types, geographic region, and program activity priorities. And to the right is a screenshot of the frequently asked questions document that answers questions about the learning community website, group learning events, communities of practice, and some of the vaccine resource hub website questions as well. These are screenshot examples of more learning community website specific resources. So to the left are the two websites fact sheet, which kind of summarizes what Bridget and Megan have talked about so far and just highlight some of the differences between the learning community and the vaccine resource hub. And to the right is one of the many tutorials in the toolkit. And the tutorial can cover some of the site basics like how to update your profile picture, register for an event, search in the peer directory and more. Now we're gonna move on to the live demo portion of the site. Before we get started, this is just a quick screenshot of the homepage that lists some of the main functions. So I'll cover the functions in a bit more detail, but each tab that you see here, the four tabs direct to a different page on the site. So the connect with peers tab will take you to the peer directory. The discuss and learn will take you to the discussion board. Attend an event will take you to the event calendar and the find and share resources will take you to the community library. Now, before diving straight into the demo, I'll just quickly cover how to get on the website. So once I create your account, you'll receive an email from info at vaccineresourcehub.org, which you can see highlighted in yellow in the screenshot. You'll then follow that link in the email to create your password and complete your account by signing in to, learn, to the learning community. If the link in the email expires before you're able to get to it, please send us an email at vaxequitylearning at urban.org, which is also at the last line of the email. And please refer to the first question in the FAQ document to learn how to request an account for yourself or for any new staff that joins the team, your team in, your, in the future. There's a registration request form link there, and I think uh, Bridget will also be sending it in the chat at some point. So now we're going to be using this learning community checklist um, in the onboarding toolkit to guide the demo. The tasks 
in the checklist all have tutorials linked to the rightmost column. We won't be going through all the individual tutorials and tasks, but we wanted to show you the website pages and where you would complete them. So if you already have an account in the learning community, please feel free to follow along. And if not, we hope that you're able to take some time and complete these tasks at your own pace once you do have an account. So I'm quickly going to stop sharing my screen and switch over to the website. Um, All right, so this is the home page uh, that you'll see when you first log in. Um, as you can see, here are the four main fun functions that I just covered. Um, the first thing that I'll cover on the um, on the checklist is how to update your profile picture. So for that, every everyone can go to the right top right corner where the little silhouette picture is, and you click on your profile here. Um, here you can update not just your profile picture, but also any bio information that you wish to include. So to change a profile picture, you would just go under actions, change picture here. Um, but you can also add a bio, add any social links, pronouns, and as you can further down you scroll, the more customization you can add. Uh, you can add topics of expertise, interests. And that's helpful mainly for the peer directory, which I'll get to in a bit as well. Um, the next tab that I'll cover is the events tab. Bridget already talked a little bit about how you can register for an event or how you can find out about events. But here we house um, the event calendar. So you can see not just the events that we're planning, which are illustrated with the urban logo at the top right, but also any partner events that people chose they wanted advertised. Um, we also have the key down here, just in case you forget. Um, but you can register for these events by clicking on individual ones, and some might not have a registration link yet, but we also like to let you know ahead of time, um, kind of a save the date situation where you could see what's coming up in August um, and just have that as a hold in your calendar. The next tab I'll cover is the peer directory. Um, so for here, you can search for people individually by name. I think yeah, Bridget's name is already there because it's like the only person I search for. Um, but you can see once you search someone's name, um, it'll give you options so you can send messages, message people directly on here. You can also add someone as a contact. We're currently working on a functionality to better the city and state searches. Um, as you can, Bridget did have Washington DC listed um, under her name. Right now we're just working on making sure that everyone will appear that way. Um, so some people have it, some people don't, but the feature will hopefully be finalized very soon. And then the last tab that I'll cover today is the discuss and learn. So for this, you can go here under my communities, and this will take you to the full community, which every member on the platform has access to. And Bridget earlier talked a little bit about the COPs. Um, so if any of those pique your interest, you can always request to join the private workspace for the COPs here. Um, and here are the three listed. But the full community, as I said earlier, is open to everyone. Um, you can scroll through any past discussion posts. Um, you can also post here. If you click this, um, you just have to write in your message here and then go ahead and post. Very similar to that functionality is the community library. So this is the private library for learning community members on the site. So you can also create an entry, again, very similar to the way that the, that the discussion board posts look like. Um, but you can also choose to add additional files like uh, PowerPoint presentations or videos. And you can also see what other people post as well. Here we have four subfolders. So we'll post some of the, well, the recording and the presentation from today in the learning community event materials, as well as you can go through any of our past events and take a look as well. <laughs> And go back to the PowerPoint presentation. One second, I have so many screens open. <laughs> and while you're doing that, Luis, we did get a couple of questions. So, um, 
I answered those in the Q&A, but um, I think we will, we have time just to mention them for, for folks that aren't checking that. Um, if you need to delete a user account, you can absolutely send a note to VaxEquityLearning at urban.org. That's the best way to reach us with that kind of request, and we'll take care of that. Um, and then there was also a question, um, and Luis, you, you sort of referred to uh, the glitches that um, we've discovered with the geography pieces of the peer directory search. So uh, not everyone would be coming up in a search for your state um, or your city. And that is because of a glitch, not because you're doing anything wrong. And we are working on it. We're close to a solution. Um, and we will be kind of adding that information in and controlling it on our side for everyone so that um, hopefully that will take care of what is currently kind of spotty information on geography in the system. Yeah, thank you, Bridget. Um, but that pretty much wraps up the live demonstration. So now you can feel free to refer to this checklist uh, in the toolkit to refamiliarize yourself and check off some of the items that we didn't get to cover today. I will say the learning community is a special site, but the site's usefulness depends on how much we as a community all put into it, whether it be through uploading resources, posting on the discussion board page, um, or simply adding a profile picture and updating your bio. As I said, there's a lot that we didn't have time to cover today, but as I mentioned earlier, these tutorials are there for to help you out um, and for you to reference to any time. So as always, if you ever do have any questions, you can refer to the FAQ document in the toolkit or send us an email at vaxequitylearning at urban.org. Now we have some upcoming events. Uh, this is a slide that Bridget was referencing earlier. Um, so we have one coming up on, I see the dates are, in reverse chronological order, but one of them is Friday, June 23rd, um, and the other one is Wednesday, June 21st. Bridget, I think when she gets the chance, will send the registration link in the chat as well. And we also have a quick satisfaction poll that I'll go ahead and launch um, while Bridget sends the registration links in the chat. Okay, so the two registration links are here. Uh, we do our best to give at least two, but ideally three to four weeks ahead of an event for you to register. We can't always make that with events that don't have that long of a uh, planning um, lead time, um, but that's our goal. Uh, and so these are June events, um, and we have some more that we'll hopefully be adding to the calendar, maybe one more in June, and then um, a workshop series in July will be coming. Uh, we will have a pretty quiet August. We'll be taking kind of a quiet period. There's lots of vacation scheduled that month, uh, lots of vacations and people in and out that month anyway. Um, and then are working on a very, um, a pretty full fall agenda for you all too. Yeah. Uh, but that pretty much covers it. And now we are more than happy to answer any questions that might have come up. Um, or I, I can open the chat too, but. Um, yeah, I see a question um, from Sandra about sending the presentation via email. So um, we try to get the presentation materials out a few different ways. Our primary way is through the website and the listserv. Um, but occasionally, if we know we might have folks in the audience who aren't easily aren't able to easily access that, uh, we can also send um, an email to registrants. So maybe, Luis, we can make a note um, to send all the materials as well to the Zoom registration list. Yeah, that sounds good. I did see a question come in through the Q&A asking if the events are mandatory. The events are all voluntary, um, so you can feel free to register for whichever ones you're available for, whichever ones you are interested in. Yeah, very good thing to add. Um, and that goes for the community of practice um, membership as well. Uh, registration is rolling or signing up for that sort of on a rolling basis. So, um, you know, there is a form uh, on the website to sign up for a COP. And if you send us an email, we can also get you signed up um, for a COP so you can learn about their next meeting and when that's going to be. Um, but that's also voluntary. Everything that we offer to you all um, is, is a voluntary. It's, it's your choice. All right, let's wait a few more minutes in case there are other questions. Hey, it seems like we're maybe good to close the session.
Thank you all. And we will be having another one of these in August. Um, I don't have the date right on my fingertips, but I know it's that first week of August, another 30 minute session. Um, at that point, uh, we will have some updates to the website um, that we'll be able to sort of share some new our, our new look to some of the sections that um, that Louise shared. Uh, but if you have new members coming on, um, make sure that you just aware that we do offer these every few months. Thank you very much all and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We appreciate your time.